The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, good afternoon. This is uh, Premal from TestingWiz. Um, we're just shortly going to begin the webinar. Um, just give us a couple of minutes before we get started. I'm waiting for my colleague uh, to join through and um, show us some of the things, especially the hands-on demo on today's session. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, today's webinar is going to be really interesting and uh, we're going to get started in a few moments. Hey again, um, hey everyone, um, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, we're happy to get started uh, today on this webinar for the test automation essential for the Digital Transformation Edge. Um, I'm joined by my colleague Balbodh Cha, uh, who is one of our solution experts. Hey guys. Um, so on today's session, what we're going to do is we're going to, the, the total time of the session today is 45 minutes. We're going to talk about the challenges people face when they convert or, you know, adapt to uh, digital business, digital um, transformation of their, of their line of uh, applications, products, etc. Uh, how it affects day-to-day -day lives, what are the challenges uh, that are faced by the traditional QA processes, what can one do to actually change that? And the key takeaway is how can automation be of a help? So um, we're going to spend some time, about 30 minutes, talking about it, and then there's a five-minute quick presentation uh, and a hands-on demo on testing with, followed by which we'll be uh, taking up questions and answer. Um, We'll try to answer all of your questions um, to our best, but nevertheless, uh, there's always a way for you to leave those questions back to us uh, via email or, you know, send it to our Twitter ID, um, and we will definitely get back to you. Okay, so a little bit of an introduction uh, about testing is I see there are a lot of known faces, known names on the today's attendee list. Today's attendee list. Uh, we have a lot of, even a couple of our customers who have joined us, uh, which is a great thing because these sessions are really helpful and allows us to uh, present the, the latest and the most happening things around the testing with uh, ecosystem. Um, so, but for people who have just joined us today for the first time, uh, testing with is a product by uh, Signet, uh, a company incorporated in the year 2000. Um, we have been around for uh, 17 years and testing with has been around for uh, last six years now. Um, we have been successfully uh, featured into a lot of places, uh, but what we stand for is, you know, um, helping organizations achieve their quality objectives at the same time um, driving uh, cost and uh, time savings uh, through innovation and um, you know helping them taking their products, applications, etc. to the market faster. Testing with is unique in, in a way because we don't use the traditional programming um, language as an interface. Um, we have a combination of recorder and a test editor builder which allows you to kind of build your test faster uh, by 30 percent uh, and it also saves time by helping you provide a single tool or a single solution um, to automate your web, mobile, API, um, 
database and even with the latest version you can record uh, desktop based commands as well. Um, so it, it really puts the power in front in, into your hands or into the hands of the testers uh, as well as end users and allows to also include a large pool of people into your testing cycle. Okay, so um, that was about testing with very quickly just talking about um, you know how this entire digital business or digital transformation is taking uh, the world by the storm. We see each and every organization stressing about it or trying to understand it and uh, you know trying to break it down into you know processes or their strategy to see how they can uh, best fit their sales, how they can have their teams trained to it and be ready for it. So what what we see today with digital business uh, and you know from where we stand as, at a standpoint um, at testing with we work with customers who are building applications which are looking ahead into the next six months or um, a year or so. Um, we see a lot of new innovation happening in a lot of spaces primarily um, you know tr driven through um, better, faster, kind of a more effective um, user engagement and taking their businesses um, into the digital way. Um, one of the very good examples is that you know one of uh, our customers, a uh, financial institution, they are looking to build a, a very interactive loan management solution which will allow um, a user to kind of log in and uh, create a self-service uh, loan application without having to go to the bank and maybe save a few trips to that. They can also appraise if in case your loan is for properties uh, the, the financial institution is looking at uh, creating methods through which they can um, digitally appraise the place location using GPS coordinates um, and um, use of mobile phones and cameras etc. Uh, so how is it helping out? Uh, it, help, it is driven through the possibilities where you know how you can save cost of operations into managing uh, the activities through a digital channel uh, or staying ahead in the, in the global competition or surviving the changes in the market um, or respond to customer demands. Just on that note, um, someone that I was talking to uh, last week um, mentioned that you know they would like they, they conduct corporate trainings and they um, have programs for corporate executives to go in and enroll themselves. Um, what they are looking at is now creating a digital platform for self-learning and self-application um, of management fundamentals uh, for these. And you know, I, while talking to them, I realized that you know they have a very traditional model and which have been very successful. So I asked them that you know why you want to invest into millions of dollars into building something which is not going to be giving you an ROI immediately. But I think when they mentioned that you know this is where they see the market changing, they see that you know people don't want to drive to training seminars or uh, training workshops or uh, even uh, offices wants to utilize learning platforms and digital platforms to constantly have their employees engaged into training programs and uh, skill upgradation, etc. I think it makes perfect sense. So this is how um, digital transformation is, or digital businesses, actually helping it out. Uh, it's either driven through innovation or um, it's a combination of one of these factors. Um, so, how it's been adapted in the organizations, you see uh, a lot of adaptation happening around uh, the introduction of technologies like cloud or enterprise service or, uh, you know, offering scalability. Uh, today, for, for a business to go online uh, or to take an application online doesn't take more than, uh, you know, a few clicks to go online and buy. Um, one of the examples is Microsoft Power BI. Um, 
and and you know just on uh, just on that note we, this is not sponsored but microsoft power bi allows you to set up your dashboard on the cloud uh, at a small percentage of fee uh, and with limited usage one can put or set up their dashboards within a few weeks um, then you know adaptability and technologies uh, adapt adoption of social media and messaging platforms uh, to create customer engagement increase in usage of applications and computer softwares um, you know people are always tethered to something um, it's either their tablet laptop or um, or their phones and what's funny is that all these devices are also actually connected um, with each other so for example I check my emails on my phone I Laptop. I have a workstation at my office that I use, and I think everything, all my files, etc. With that, um, I'm not a, I'm not a big geek, but I think you know we can't even wearables. Um, I walk into meetings where you know everyone in the meeting has a wearable, and they are constantly checking emails, uh, or even you know setting up that you know when they won't want to reply to those emails using wearables. So there is this whole connectivity around it. Um, which is driving this um, this entire digital uh, you know uh, boom around um, your applications and the adoption of big data and advanced analytics to store process volume and variety of data. I already mentioned Power BI as one of the examples. Um, I was actually hinting towards the cloud uh, setup or how easy it is to get started with any of these tools. Uh, but yeah, these are the things which are actually driving the innovation. So how does it actually affect your QA team? Um, and what should you kind of prepare for? So this brings in um, more and more need for QA into your business. And um, the entire focus shifts on making sure that you know when your customer demands or you know when they when they are trying to engage through your application, um, they can find what they what they need. Um, imagine you know logging into a go to webinar session and not having connectivity from this end. Uh, it would really hurt the the organizer as a brand as well as it will kind of hurt the learning on that side as well, um, affecting a huge amount of people uh, into one form or the other form. So it's very important to have your integrity of your applications being consistent um, and offer the right user experience. You know, being clunky today is also not acceptable. We um, we have customers who would want to test the user experience through automation, or they want to automate uh, customer user journey using these and um, things like you know where they want to mimic how a customer would engage with the applications like few slides, clicks, how quickly those buttons are responding back or how quickly those back-end web services are being integrated with their other systems or their enterprise services, uh, enterprise services, bus, ESBs, etc. So that's very, very important. Um, then security and data privacy is also important. Um, we take we carry our banking apps on our phones and imagine a situation where your phone gets hacked or you lose your phone or physically uh, your phone goes into the wrong hands. It's very important to test that. Um, and working with disparate applications in the complex ID landscape. I mean, we have today, nobody has an application. You can't build an application which only supports a limited set of resolutions or screen sizes or devices. You need to make sure that you know all this this euphoria around mobility, tablets, responsive design, etc. Your application is working. So you need to not only test your application on through one iteration. You need to do three iterations, and you know imagine the amount of manual labor that brings into uh, for your QA teams. Um, talking about uh, the challenges, um, it has been. Um, I think the the need for QA is growing consistently, and you know Gartner predicts that eventually uh, QA would be 
consisting of more than 65 percent of um, of the total application um, cost or development cost or ownership cost of the applications. Uh, but it's the kind of challenges users face are you know trouble in testing applications for different devices, um, testing end-to-end -end workflows. Uh, we very recently had one of our customers who wanted to test. Um, so it's a very interesting use case. They would add uh, a menu or a or a option, user select option from the back end and they would want to simultaneously uh, test it in real time with their mobile app to see how quickly those users are getting those options. Um, and talking about application consistency and functioning across different systems, um, validation, app quality, customer experience at different che checkpoints or touch points, uh, and uh, especially, you know, problems in checking the orchestration of data and services. I mean, how quickly your data is going, where is it going, um, and your, you know, is it reflecting real time in all your platforms, mobile app, your responsive uh, web application, or your uh, desktop widget, etc. And um, constantly monitoring this 360 degree performance around it. So, given these challenges, how do we basically move on and how is, uh, you know, what is there to kind of help you out and make the life easy for you. So we figure, I think, um, the, without a doubt, test automation is the answer and I think with the modern day uh, digital requirements, a holistic approach to application testing is required. I mean, it needs to be fast, nimble, and turn um, quickly uh, to make sure that it can keep pace with the way we are developing applications, be it agile, uh, be it rapid application development, etc. So how test automation serves this? So it helps in uh, reducing your cost and improving your ROI. This is kind of like the most basic thing that one can uh, think of. Um, then talking about it increases efficiency and speed to meet your objectives this turnaround time, I mean, if you have your regression suites automated, um, it saves, I think, the return on something like this is huge and immense, and one can get about um, 70 to 80 times worth of return on their investments if you put in automation the right way. Um, it also ensures in providing um, the right validation process across the digital landscape and more compatibility, usability, and accessibility for your platforms and overall improving the feedback mechanism for your application. Um, so what is important? Um, so it's, it's important for your test automation tools or your test automation strategy to cover um, you know, omnichannel testing. So what do we mean by omni-channel is it should validate application across platforms, browsers, devices, uh, etc. Uh, it's important to test your APIs and webhooks. At the end of the day, these uh, services are going to drive um, you know everything that you would eventually build around your ecosystem uh, needs to be driven through this. And then um, data validation, very important, very critical. Uh, a lot of time functional testing or even any kind of test automation doesn't cover data validation and um, database uh, testing or validating what's going into your database. Uh, it's very important that it is covered and running these regression tests across um, the ecosystem at the same time is also important and at the right speed. Uh, so how does testing with help or how does how do we do it? So we offer uh, built-in web test automation um, by record and playback or using the test editor. And everything that is built on testing with is cross-browser friendly. So um, you would see here, you know, you have an option to create a script using the recorder, or you would see this test editor. One can simply drag and drop test commands. Um, it can be mouse overs, etc., to uh, quickly build your scripts. And these scripts are cross-browser friendly, uh, as well as 
cross OS friendly. So anything that you build on um, on testing with is available to the users across the browsers. Um, and these are the variety of browsers we support. We support the most latest browsers as well as the mobile versions of them. And we also offer an ability to uh, test headless, uh, which is in addition to everything that we offer um, out of the box. Uh, it act, headless testing uh, uses something like uh, you know testing without invoking the UI elements. So it saves about in our test we could save about 30% time uh, in comparison to executing it. So it uses less resources, um, less memory to run your tests. So your test runs faster. Imagine if you have an entire regression suite um, and each test you are able to save 30% and each test takes one minute, then you can kind of across 500 test cases, one can save an uh, immense amount of time. Um, then finally, um, APIs and webhooks, we have, um, just like you would uh, test an API, we have an ability to automate the process. So you can um, perform verifications and validation by sending through a particular request and receiving the body of, um, of response and seeing if the response is accurate. Uh, the same test can be parameterized or made data driven. So um, enables to test multiple APIs at the same time. What you can, what user can do is you can have uh, all your APIs created, or stored into the data table available in testing with and all your requests can also be stored in, in a data driven test which you can kind of loop through by shifting those APIs and sending through, shifting the different requests that you would want to make. Um, we also offer a step further and we think that you know the total ecosystem should be tested. So we offer database testing and data validation. Uh, you have the option to connect to, uh, we have inbuilt recorders and you have the option to connect to uh, five primary RDBMS technologies, the most popular one, um, Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, Postgres SQL, and um, also big data technologies like Teradata, um, Hadoop, etc. So testing was just doesn't allow to test APIs with the functional aspects or the UI elements. We also go a step further into the core of your application by um, going in and allowing you to query the data databases, get a response back, and then test if the application, what it is displaying on your, what's coming out on your web page is accurately being stored or driven, given from your databases. Um, and then you have accelerators around that. Um, we realize that, you know, when you would want to test an application, it's, it's really frustrating that, you know, when you want to test a simple form as well, the user needs to um, go in and create these data types or else you know every time you write a test your testers go out and use the same test data. So we have built in a test data generation that generates a test set, set of test data for you um, and you know it's a whole lot useful feature. Um, you can have an option to create different names, email numbers, um, emails, numbers, um, and my favorite, credit card IDs, um, uh, which allows you to kind of create different combinations. You can also create date of birth, etc., to test your form or you know uh, log those into your test automation cycle. Um, so we also do end-to-end -end testing with that, which is mobile testing, big data, and distributed testing on different cloud, we have ability to test UI, uh, responsive uh, UI on uh, mobile web browsers as well as, um, so we support uh, Android uh, native browser as well as Android Chrome browser and Apple Safari which is the, uh, for iOS which is the native uh, browser component. 
And then you also have an ability to test your native apps using testing with. Um, you also have big data testing as a use case, um, which automates data validation across sources. Uh, we have currently connectors for Hive, MapReduce, Scoop, and Pick, and uh, you know you can do post ETL validation using testing with and data health checks. And then finally, we have a distributed cloud execution. So you know we are trying to be as digital friendly as we can by allowing you to uh, you know have a cloud infra uh, available to scale up your testing life cycle. Uh, and how do we do all this is we offer continuous integration, editable object properties, um, and uh, reusable test methods to simplify testing. So um, for someone who wants to kind of integrate their entire um, continuous integration or continuous uh, testing using a single dashboard or a tool for, such as Jenkins, etc., can be done. Um, we also have editable object properties which can be edited once you capture them. And then finally, everything that you you, you log or you create as a test script in testing with uh, can be copied and stored as a reusable component, just like in Excel. So that's a very, very quick overview on this. I think we are on time for our demo. Uh, I would like Balbo to come in and um, show us some of the use cases. And then after that, we can um, take through questions and answer. You can type through your questions and we'll um, take bubble 40. Uh, thanks, Premal. Uh, good evening, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. So um, I'm, I'm here to uh, present you some of the use cases which, which are uh, uh, mentioned over here. Like, we are uh, we will be uh, looking have a, having a look at uh, a UI element which 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 would be validated on the uh, browser. So that that is that is a use case for validating your uh, UI components for on during your web automation uh, test case. Uh, second test case is is about uh, validating your uh, uh, responses from the RESTful. Uh, API. So what we are doing is we are making a request to a server for uh, for providing responses, and then we are validating some important information from the website, and then we are validating that information on the Google. That we would be uh, validating both uh, our web services is working fine with the uh, online information or not. So we are validating our web service value with the uh, Google information. Then the third use case would be uh, is, is about uh, validating a database a query. So what we are doing is we are making a query to, uh, to a database to fetch values and then we are validating the same value uh, on, on the website. So uh, first, we are validating uh, our expected with the actual on the website, and then we are also validating the uh, value which has been recorded through the website UI and which is, which logs a record into the database, and then we are fetching that value uh, into our data table and then comparing it. So that's for uh, use case number three. Uh, fourth is is we, we, we would be uh, fetching uh, would be uh, all those test cases would be uh, executed in in a in in parallel and distributed uh, uh, fashion like we would be executing all those test cases in multiple instances of the browser and and we can save our time based on on the instances of the browser as well as number of test cases which we have and, and finally, we will be uh, showcasing uh, how you can integrate your uh, testing test cases execution uh, via Jenkins. So uh, what we have done over here is we have 
we have our Jenkins server which has been uh, utilizing utilized by testing with and then we would be uh, kicking off our execution from the Jenkins build. So uh, let's go ahead and have a look. So uh, over here the use case one is about validating UI components on the website. So on the first use case what we are doing is we are uh, opening up the website and then we are typing some information on the form available and then we are fetching some attribute like would be uh, fetching a placeholder attribute from the back end and then we would be comparing it to some uh, expected values which we have over here and then uh, in the second check what we are doing is we are validating a text value on the website plus would be uh, extracting the phone size phone size of, of a particular uh, website uh, uh, text and then would be validating that particular phone size or with our expected results so UI components are validated and if something is, is not uh, uh, validated correctly, then it would fail our test case. So let's execute this. So we'll open up the Chrome browser. We'll uh, try to input some component, uh, try to input some form uh, inputs and then it would be uh, validating the UI parts. So it's taking a bit of time. We'll move move on to the navigation uh, page. We'll move on to the download page, and then it will start to fill out those. Uh, basic uh, information which we uh, which is required on the form and then it will try to validate some some of the uh, information on the web page so it has completed the execution and uh, once you have a look at the uh, report it is it will be uh, validating all the information in the back end say it says that the text value value was 17 pixel size and all those UI components were validated moving on to the second use case second use case is about uh, making and making a, a record entry from the website which logs a record into a database and then in the back end we are uh, would be validating the entry which has been made with this UI form and then we are validating the same thing on the database part So it has a UI and uh, that UI would be uh, inserting a record via, via form uh, on the in, inside the database and then we would be fetching that particular same, same information from the database and validating it across our uh, expected result. So if you take a look at uh, query so what we have uh, these many records available in, in, my, in our database and from the second query we are validating this single uh, 
information which was feeded uh, through the website just now. Moving on, we have third use case which is uh, which is a uh, use case for validating your uh, REST web service response with with the UI validation available on the website. So we are fetching uh, uh, code stock value from the from the web services which we have. So we are fetching the stock value for Infosys. Uh, company and then we'll be validating it across the website. So we'll be opening up Google Google page and then we'll be validating that particular stock price on the Google uh, website. So that comparison is being done across web services and the UI, valid, UI validation part as well. If you take a look at uh, reports, we have uh, information from a day from the web service that the value was one zero one two, and uh, from the day, from the website from the Google website we got one zero one two. So both of the values were uh, perfectly matching to each other, and that's why the test case was passed. For the fourth use case, we have would be handling a UI component on the uh, on the UI on the website part. So uh, over here we are we would be displaying uh, how we can handle Windows components uh, from the from the uh, testing with itself. So what we are doing over here is we are the, uh, we are we are a file on the website and then we are validating uh, the information available inside that file on the website. So you'd be seeing uh, how we can handle uh, upload dialog box on the file. So validation was done uh, based on uh, the visual component through testing this. So this was all possible with the visual recorder which we had, and uh, as 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 the use case four was mentioned, so we will be forking all these uh, use cases and we'll be executing all the four test cases. In parallel, in the same, in in the sim, in a single browser of those instances. So, multiple browser instances would be opened as you as you all can see, and all the test cases would be performed in parallel, which would save your time uh, overnight. If something fails, we can have a look at uh, in in the report. So our test cases has we finished the execution. One of them was failed, and 
due to the uh, invisibility of some component, it was failed. So uh, that's fair enough. Uh, now in the end part, we can have a look at how we can execute our test cases through Jenkins. So, so we have we have our Jenkins server running up, running available, and then we have we have integrated our Jenkins. Uh, integrated our testing with with our Jenkins uh, server. So what we are doing is we would be starting our server inside testing with and using uh, this menu. And then in the uh, Jenkins part, we need to build our uh, uh, build a sample project. And when we we have to specify a test script, for example, over here in this uh, build, we would be specifying our uh, server part and we will be specifying our, uh, the test case folder which we have over here and all the test cases which are available inside that folder would be executed. So how long does it take to set up Jenkins? So it generally takes, if we have Jenkins server available, we just have to make uh, uh, around five minutes of it to create a build and then we are ready to kick off the uh, execution from Jenkins. Okay. So all of your uh, test cases, all of your project file can be uh, kick, kick off, kicked off in a single uh, build. So that's pretty neat if you take a look at uh, continuous integration. So when we say build now, it will be starting up all the execution and whatever twist files we, we have in that folder, all those twist files will be executed in a single way. So we have around two test projects available into that folder and all of those reports would be stored separately. So it offers a good reporting capability as well. Yes, so one by one all the test cases, all the project files would be executed and you, you would have uh, separate report, reports for each and every uh, project file. So over here the execution was successful as you can see and on the console output of Jenkins, we can see that uh, the reports are being shown. So over here, the first test case report was there, was there, and in the second part, like this. So we can have a look at the detailed reports as detailed well. reports as well through Jenkins itself. So it's a single kind of a interface to manage all your test projects and test cases. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, thanks a lot guys. Um, we're going to quickly stop for um, questions. Um, we can take your questions. Uh, you can type through your questions using um, dialog box available there and we would be happy to answer them. Okay, fantastic. So uh, we have a question from Walla Rasu, Walla La Rasu uh, Pandian. Uh, how to find object values and fill the values column? So I believe you're trying to ask a question that how do you find object values and fill the value column? So uh, you have a couple of ways to do that using testing ways. One is you can use um, uh, a recorder. Uh, in situations where recorder is not able to capture the object values, um, you can use um, something like an object identifier such as Firebug if you're, or, or Firepath or something like that. These are free tools available in the, on, the, uh, on the net uh, and you can uh, freely install them as plugins onto your and I'm sure there are also the tools for Chrome and other browsers which you can kind of uh, refer to. So uh, these tools allow you to kind of locate your object values pretty easily. You can hover through to the button and when you click on that the plugin will like, show you the object values in the XPath for your application. Uh, also in a lot of cases um, we use Recorder app to boilerplate the test scenario and then um, 
add more verifications, validations, and checkpoints uh, to make your test case more intelligent. So both the options are available, and the recorder would kind of speed up the process to a huge degree. We hope that answers your question. Thanks a lot. Okay, we have one more question. Okay, so the question is how to automate objects that cannot be identified with single property and value. So, uh, in testing with we um, um, we also use um, multiple other ways to identify an object uh, alongside XPath or CSS value. There are um, you will mention that I think. So uh, there are a couple of uh, other things like XPath, CSS path. Uh, then we have ID uh, attribute. We we can use uh, name attribute. We can use class attribute to. And there's um, also screen, uh, screen coordinate coordinates that you can so, use. Uh, all Multiple all fail safes. Yeah. yeah. With all those things, we can we can identify a particular object on the website, and you can automate through them. Absolutely. Okay, guys, we're gonna um, take the last set of questions. If if anyone has any um, considering that we are a little bit over our time, um, and sorry for starting in late today, uh, but if you have more questions, you can always email us on info at testingwiz.com. Uh, and we will be happy to answer them. The recording of the webinar and the presentation will be available on our web page very shortly and you can download it from our website. Thanks again for joining us through and thanks Bob both for the demo. Um, we sign off until the next session. You all have a great week and a great month ahead. Bye.